Good morning. Thank you. It's on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Woo, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Marianne Kallenbach, pastor at Living Faith Church, which for those of you who are watching from afar, I've got to tell you, it's quite a rainy day today here. Quite a rainy day. As a matter of fact, there's a new lake. Um, it's yeah. called Country Club Boulevard Lake <laughs> on the way in. Yes. So all of you who managed to uh, kayak across that lake, welcome. And for those of you who are watching from afar, welcome to worship this morning. We are located in the city of Port St. Lucie in um, uh, Florida. <laughs> With all this rain, I'm forgetting where we're at. We're in Florida. And I welcome you to this, um, what we call our liturgical New Year's Eve. It is the last Sunday in the church calendar. So when we say the uh, liturgical season, the liturgical count, um, calendar, it's a fancy way of saying the church calendar. So today we celebrate the reign of Christ, or what is also known as Christ the King Day. So it is the last Sunday in our church calendar. So happy New Year's Eve. Yeah, yeah. So um, we will today be going through all the seasons of the church year. And our focus, I don't know if you remember, uh, but all of uh, 20, what year is this? I mean, like we just lost 2020, didn't we? <laughs> so from um, uh, December or the first Sunday in Advent in 2020 through today, we have been focusing on new beginnings, new ways of seeing Jesus, right? It was new beginnings. I mean, for uh, coming out of uh, COVID or I'm not, we're not even coming out of COVID, it, are we? We're learning how to live in this new time in our lives is what we're learning. So we're talked about new beginnings and new ways of seeing Jesus in our lives. So we wrap that up and next Sunday, which is the first Sunday in Advent. So it will be new year's day in the church calendar. I'll be sharing with you what our theme will be for um, the upcoming year. So a couple announcements I do want to make. The first is, oh, so for our folks that are worshiping from home, you can download the worship bulletin by going to lfc.church forward slash worship, W-O-R-S-H-I-P backslash. No, it's forward slash, backslash, some slash. <laughs> you know how to do this. <laughs> it's forward slash. Yeah. So the person who runs all of our technology and actually put this out there for everyone said, what do I know? I think a lot. LFC.church forward slash worship, W-O-R-S-I-S-H-I-P hyphen bulletin, B-U-L-L-E-T-I-N. And you've also, everyone had been sent an email. So you can just click on that where you can actually then um, see the worship bulletin and participate um, uh, from afar uh, <clears throat> using that worship bulletin. Second thing I want to let you know is I'm taking a little vacation. So um, four days, four days, we'll be out of town uh, beginning Tuesday. So I'm around tomorrow. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'll be back on Saturday. 
If you need me, don't hesitate to call because I will put you in touch with the right person based on whatever it is the emergency is that you might have. So we're just heading up to North Carolina to spend time with um, our 10, I call them my grandkids, but they're not my great nieces and nephews, but they're like grandchildren. So we're so looking forward to seeing them after having the hiatus last year from being able to go up for Thanksgiving. So um, that also means that there will be no uh, meditations this week, but that doesn't mean that you can't do meditations on your own. And if you look at our YouTube channel, all the meditations for the past 19, 20 months are out there for you to look at. So now we're going to go through the liturgical church year. So let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today is the last Sunday of the church year, a day when Christians throughout the world celebrate the reign of Christ our Lord. He alone is ruler and king of our lives, our church and all creation. Since this day is a kind of liturgical New Year's Eve, our service will help us to reflect on the year gone by, as well as prepare us for the year to come. But our memories today will not focus on the changing history of our lives, but on the timeless story of Christ's rule as celebrated throughout the church year. We will remember the year gone by liturgically, traveling through the seasons of the church year in scripture, hymns, and prayers. Now the words to the music are in your bulletin, so you can sing along. As we do so, we will remember that in every season, Christ reigns as our eternal king. As we move together into the future, it is his reign that gives our lives purpose and hope. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved son to be priest and king forever. Grant that all the people of the earth now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the season of Advent, we light the candles of the Advent wreath, marking the weeks of preparation as we look forward to the celebration of our King's birth at Christmas. In this season, we also anticipate Christ's return to earth on the last day as victorious ruler of the universe. Our reading from Isaiah looks forward to Christ's kingdom as a reign of righteousness and justice where all God's people will be protected, nurtured, and restored. As we wait for him to come again, let us prepare our hearts for his reign now and forever. I'm sorry, and follow where he leads. Let me just say that again. As we prepare for him to come again, let us prepare our hearts for his reign now and follow where he leads us. Our theme for Advent this past year was an announcement, new beginnings, an announcement. Our scripture is from Isaiah. See, a king will reign in righteousness and rulers will rule with justice. Each one will be like a shelter from the wind and a refuge from the storm, like streams of water in the desert and the shadow of a great rock in a thirsty land. Then the eyes of those who see will no longer be closed and the ears of those who hear will listen. The fearful heart will know and understand and the stammering tongue 
will be fluent and clear. Let us pray. Prepare our hearts for your coming, Lord, for you are our King, now and forever. Amen. On Christmas, we celebrate with joy. I think we do. How's that? On Christmas, we celebrate with joy the coming of the Christ child, the Prince of Peace and the King of all creation. In our gospel from St. Luke, we hear now heaven and earth rejoice together over Jesus' birth. Let us join their majestic celebration and receive our King, for the Lord has come to us. I invite you to stand as you're able for the reading of the Christmas gospel from Luke. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Thank you. 
let us pray. Almighty God, you made your love known in the weakness of a human child. We pray that the birth of our newborn king will free us from our bondage to sin and give us everlasting joy through Jesus. Amen. In the season of Epiphany, we remember the star of Bethlehem that led the Magi to the birthplace of our king, and we celebrate how the light of his gracious rule continues to shine in our darkness to reveal his eternal glory. In our new beginnings in this season, we focused on, come on, the scripture is from Matthew. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went on ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed on coming to the house. They saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their eyes and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. You may be seated as we sing, shine. Let us pray. Heavenly King, you revealed your son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us to the full vision of your glory. Amen.
The Lenten season is characterized by the sign of the cross marked on our brow in baptism. During Lent, we humbly kneel before the throne of God, confessing our sins and praying for new life. Our reading from Revelation reminds us that through his suffering and death, Christ has made us a new kingdom of priests to serve our God. As we meditate on Jesus' love, we pray for the spirit to make us faithful to our calling to live as children of God. And our theme for Lent in that time, that season, we talked about new beginning is, who are you? Hear these words from Revelation. Grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and father to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him and all the peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Let us pray. Gracious God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts so that truly repentant we may obtain from you the King of mercy, forgiveness. And though the darkness surrounds us, let your kingdom of light break into our troubled world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In Holy Week, we ponder the tremendous sacrifice of Jesus, our King, who laid down his life to forgive our sins and to make us his own forever. In the Last Supper, Jesus gave us an assurance of his love by giving us a foretaste of his eternal kingdom through the gift of his body and his blood. On the cross, he defeated all the powers of evil and began his reign of forgiveness and life. Jesus has died for you so that you may live in him. I invite you to stand as you're able. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the 12. And while they were eating, he said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, surely not I, Lord. 
And he answered, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The son of man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Jesus, who betrayed him, said, surely not I, rabbi. And Jesus replied, you have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And after blessing it, he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Speak to us, O Lord, in the breaking of the bread and make us one with you. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus reminded us of this meal, the body and the blood, the bread and the wine. It is the foretaste of the feast to come and we heard this. This is grace poured out to us that we can taste the promise, the promise that you have been forgiven and you have been reconciled once and for all time. So come forward to receive this life-giving meal, remembering that those who have gone before us are seated at the banquet feast. When you come forward, you'll be invited <clears throat> to take one of our little communion kits, cups, and the words will be spoken to you of that promise to remind you. And then you're invited to head back to your seat. And um, when you head back, just peel off the very top where the very top is a wafer. And then if you pull the whole thing back, it's a little tricky, um, but be persistent. There is the grape juice. During this season in which we are very cautious, we continue to use this form of the sacrament, but make no mistake about it. It truly carries the promise that has been given to each of us. So you are welcome to come forward on both sides, actually just keeping your distance and both Lynn and I will wear our masks as you feel comfortable coming forward.
I invite you to stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The people stood watching and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine 
vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice about him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. pray as our Lord Jesus Christ taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. On Easter, on Easter, 
We sing glad alleluias for our King has risen from the dead and promises that we will live with him for all eternity. In our Easter gospel, we read of Mary Magdalene's encounter with Jesus outside the garden tomb. In the same way, Jesus meets us in the midst of our sorrow to give us the joy of his eternal life. And our theme for Easter was arisen. So I invite you to arise, stand now as you're able, as we hear the gospel. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she, w- she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And the angels asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, Mary said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, Mary turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But Mary did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, Mary said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. Mary turned toward Jesus and cried out in Aramaic, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news I have seen the Lord. And Mary told them that Jesus had said these things to her. Let us pray. Most glorious God, you have defeated the powers of sin and death by raising to life your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Make his living presence manifest in our lives that the power of his resurrection may be known through all that we say and do. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. During the season of Pentecost, 
We recognize Christ's presence among us today through the Holy Spirit, a relationship begun in baptism. The reading from Colossians includes a prayer that God will give us a spirit of wisdom and understanding and create in us lives that are worthy of the Lord, filled with thanksgiving for all God's good gifts as we live even now in the kingdom of God. Here's the reading from Colossians. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. Our theme for this season, which has lasted the longest of all the seasons, was new beginning in the spirit today. You may be seated at this time. And for those who make your offering in person, you are welcome to do so, to come forward at this time. Thank you for all who make your offerings through uh, online giving. And for those who are worshiping from afar, you can make your a gift, your offering to the church at lfc.church and then just click on donate. I invite you to stand as you're able for our prayers of intercession. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, on the world, and all in need. Almighty God, you love us and free us through the death and resurrection of your son. Lead your church through the gospel. Bless pastors, deacons, musicians, teachers, and all who speak your truth. King of love, hear our prayer. You reveal your goodness and majesty of what you have created. 
bring favorable weather to places affected by storms, protect plants and animals from devastation, and guide us in our uses of all natural resources. King of love, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you desire justice in the world. Grant to courts wise and discerning judges, attorneys, and public defenders, and guide the rules of nations to bring about peace. King of love, hear our prayer. You are our beginning and our end. Soothe the afflicted, comfort the distressed, console the bereaved, and heal the sick, especially those we name in our hearts or out loud before you now. Steve, Sharon, Jan, Donna, Leanne, Amelia, Troy, Tim, Jean, Alice, Helen, Sue, Fred, Dylan, Stephen, Nancy, Mark, Rosemary. Give all who provide care a measure of your compassion and peace. King of love, hear our prayer. You call us to serve our neighbors, nourish us with word and sacrament so that we serve as your hands and feet in the world. Protect those who are traveling and bless those who are unable to attend worship today. King of love, hear our prayer. Your dominion is forever and ever. We give thanks for the faithful departed who live with the saints of all ages in your infinite love. King of love, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, spoken and silent, that we commend to you this day, trusting in your abundant mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We come to this day. And that season after Pentecost, which is green growth, has been a long season for us, hasn't it? It was back in May that we celebrated Pentecost. And we've grown a lot in the spirit in our journey of new beginnings this year. So hear these words, Christ reigns triumphant yesterday, today, and forever. God has given him all authority in heaven and earth so that our lives may be filled with thankfulness, service, love, and praise. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>